Now, I've played every single Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy Advance game, but it wasn't until I started playing the Japanese versions of these games that I noticed some things were a little bit different. And not just the card art, but other things in these games too. As I paid more and more attention to these differences, I began to realize that some of the changes that were made made no sense at all. So today, we're going over all the censored content in these games to show off the times that Konami got it right, but more often, all the times they got it wrong. Let's start with the genesis of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GBA series, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Eternal Duelist Soul. This had some of the most obvious changes, as it typically involved some larger graphical assets. The Japanese version of this game, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters 5 Expert 1, was a pretty big offender of the no religious symbols rule that we had in the US. For example, Arcana had the Nightmare Chains card art depicted in his character background, which had to be removed as it was a wooden cross with barbed wire. This made sense as even in the TV show where Yugi is dueling Arcana, they had to replace it with a plate or table of some sort. And in Yu-Gi-Oh! Eternal Duelist Soul, this was replaced with just another image of the Dark Magician. There was also a really sick graveyard background on the Japanese version, but was also probably removed for the crosses that appeared with the tombstones. In a similar vein, Ankhs were also a big deal for some reason, as most people know from seeing the differences in the card Monster Reborn, which depicted one in the OCG arc, but was replaced with this random design in the American version. Following this logic, it makes sense that Shady's Japanese background, which depicted the Millennium Key, would have to be modified for the English release by replacing it with a Millennium Scale, but if that was a problem, how come they were able to show it in the Duel Monsters anime in such a prominent manner like when Shady enters Yugi's mind? Beyond this, the most heavily modified graphic in this game involved the six-pointed star. Much like the Ankh symbol, this symbol was prohibited and required the creators of Yu-Gi-Oh! to modify many of their original card arts with the most commonly known example being Spellbinding Circle. We primarily know this symbol as the Star of David, but in Japan, it takes on some other meanings and is commonly used in Japanese media in accordance with anything that is magical or spellcraft and things of the like. The portrayal of this symbol would, of course, carry over into the Yu-Gi-Oh! video games, and in the Japanese version of Eternal Duelist Soul, it appeared in a bunch of places, like the main menu screen where all the options are circled around, the background graphic of the Tier 3 opponents comprised of Merrick and his rare hunters, the actual coin on the coin flip screen, the special animation that appears whenever you conduct a ritual summon, and finally, the background of the Exodia Obliteration graphic. This means that it also appeared in Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition, as it's a slightly modified version of Eternal Duelist Soul, so it of course has the exact same Exodia animation. While Shady's Key got censored in the game, but not the show, Eternal Duelist Soul and Worldwide Edition were pretty consistent in its censorship for the most part. That is, of course, until you get to the card artworks themselves, which were also the same for both of these games. Now, they did make an effort to censor some of the cards that required them. So, for instance, Arlone, Call of the Haunted, and Gemini Elf did sport their alternate artworks, but despite this effort, there were quite a few cards that still had their OCG versions intact. We can clearly see that Harpy Lady was left uncensored, but this isn't much of a surprise, considering the first edition of Metal Raiders had this card artwork before it was eventually censored. However, cards like Resurrection of Chakra somehow made it through the localization, Skelangel retained its halo despite it being a religious symbol, Spear Cretan is doing his thing without a shirt, but more interestingly, we got the uncensored version of Ring of Destruction with the Circle of Grenades, which is the only time we ever get to see this card artwork in the US release of a Game Boy Advance game. There were a couple of other cards that should have been modified in theory, but for the most part, I'd consider the censorship in these games just fairly inconsistent. However, when it comes to the legendary duology of Yu-Gi-Oh! The Sacred Cards and Reshef of Destruction, the levels of inconsistency took a drastic jump. 
in the sacred cards, they made an effort to remove the six pointed star in the card shop basement where you duel Arcana in the Buzzsaw Deathmatch. Both the one on the wall and in the middle of the floor were changed to the symbol that's used in the US version of Spellbinding Circle. On top of this, they even went and changed the Spellbinding Circle card itself, but strangely, the Exodia head and all of his limbs were left with the star background, which doesn't make a lot of sense as it was changed in Worldwide Edition, but not for this game, so I'm not really sure what the difference was. When it comes to the Ankhs that appeared in this game, they seem to just leave them all in, as the original Monster Reborn art was left in the game unmodified, and even cards that included the Ankh, like Water Magician, were also left with their OCG artwork. In addition to this, they left the Red Crosses in on Injection Fairy Lily, the Zombie Head on Axe of Despair, and they even left Last Day of the Witch unmodified. However, when it came to the Legendary Fisherman and Dharma Cannon, these were given new artworks, I guess for being too violent or something, but there were really only a few instances of these censored symbols, but when it came to the waifus, they had quite a bit to consider, which led to a whole bunch of weird outcomes. For instance, they went ahead and censored cards like Sonic Maid, Water Dragon Fairy, and Resurrection of Chakra, but for some reason, left cards like Gemini Elf, Ice Water, and Succubus Knight with their unmodified OCG arts. And honestly, this is barely scratching the surface when it came to these sort of artwork, so I'm not really sure what the plan or reasoning was for the cards they did decide to modify, but they would make an effort to correct some of these inconsistencies in the sequel to this game, Reshef of Destruction. They decided to actually censor everything in this game, from the Exodia pieces to Monster Reborn and everything in between. Even getting as precise as removing things that I would consider barely noticeable in the course of a playthrough, but despite this effort, there were a couple of spots that had some glaring inconsistencies. The biggest example of this is with the full screen Harpy Lady Sisters animation that plays during a cutscene involving my Valentine in the casino. And you actually see this animation twice during the course of a playthrough, so someone was really proud of this one. Meanwhile, the Harpy Lady card itself is actually censored whenever you view it in the card details, but the dumbest part of this is that there's actually an uncensored Harpy Lady in the exact same screen, as Harpy Lady is in the background along with the Summoned Skull, Blue Eyes White Dragon, and Dark Magician, and this was carried over from the Sacred Card, so I guess they just forgot to change it here as well. Also, the card Leopard Girl somehow made it through all this censorship and I'm not really sure why, but it's now my new favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card, and I never fully understood why cards like Dancing Elf and Amazonas Swordswoman didn't ever require an art change even in the TCG version, but I guess that's kind of a different story. Interestingly, Konami would go back to the sacred cards and recensor everything that they could in the game with the release of the Yu-Gi-Oh double pack, which had the sacred cards and Reshefa Destruction on a single game cartridge. Although I don't think they did this out of necessity, but more so out of convenience now that they had all these censored assets from Reshefa Destruction on the exact same cartridge. I mostly think this because cards like Spirit of the Winds, which had to get recensored in Reshefa Destruction, had their thumbnail changed as well, but the new thumbnail in Reshef was a little messed up, and that same messed up thumbnail was carried over to the patch version of the sacred cards. So I mostly suspect this to be a simple lazy patch job, but it did allow Konami to incorrect some of the past inconsistencies. But even with all this, they still managed to leave Harpy Lady uncensored even though it was censored in Reshef, Maiden of Moonlight retained her curse back despite being removed, and even Rose Spectre of Dun carried on with its uncensored version even though they did fix it in the future. So. While they did fix a lot, there were definitely some things that fell through the cracks. Now when it came to censoring the game Yu-Gi-Oh! Dungeon Dice Monsters, they went with a completely different strategy. You see, the original Defense Crest was a shield that had a cross in the middle, which they had to completely change the inner symbol as it appeared in many places, like the name entry screen, the background of the dice pull editor, every single dice that had a guard crest on it, and most prominently in the background of Grandpa's Dice Shop. 
However, when it came to the six-pointed star that was used as the magic crest symbol and appeared in nearly all the same places, but even more so as it was the main background pattern of the very first tournament of the game where every single player plays through and even the entire floor for the monster battling animations, they decided to handle it a little bit differently. Instead of changing it to something completely different like the guard crest, someone had the genius idea of simply removing these two lines to make it totally not a religious symbol dude and just a cool triangle pattern, hashtag trust me bro. While they did spend some time censoring these symbols, I don't think they censored any of the cards that are associated with each dice, as I would think that the red cross on the medical aid kit would have had to been changed in theory and even the dice skull angel would have had to been censored to remove its halo, but I'm pretty sure they didn't mess with this at all as there's still a full six pointed star left in the card art of Declaration of Despair, whose effect destroys the magic crest of the player who stumbles upon the item chest. While I'm pretty sure the cards were left the same, the developers did go through all the dice effect animations and removed anything that was assumably required to do so. For instance, the summoning animation for the legendary Dark Magician Girl adds the effect of all spell monsters that have been destroyed and briefly pulls up a picture of a graveyard. So. They went ahead and modified all the crosses so that they ended up looking like random shapes. They also had to end up changing the resurrection scroll animation as it contained some extra tombstones in the foreground and the same exact graveyard background. The seldom seen Exodia Obliterate animation would also need to be modified as it contained a 5 pointed star but this one doesn't make a lot of sense as all the Exodia piece cards in the US version still have the star background. but. Lastly, they definitely had to get rid of the Thousand Eyes Restrict animation that lets you control an opponent's monster in exchange for a bunch of spell crests, but this one is a little intense and should be a surprise to no one. Finally, they would have to modify the intro sequence as if you've seen my other video, they would end up removing the word fetish, but what I also noticed is that the totally not a religious symbol was even fixed in the super secret Dark Magician Girl intro sequence as the star symbol appears on the badge in the middle of her chest. Which brings me to the next huge area of censorship, which is Dark Magician Girl's chest in the game Yu-Gi-Oh! Destiny Board Traveler. This game had even fewer changes made to its graphical assets, but this one was pretty hard to miss, and I'm not really a fan of the American version of it, but I can definitely see why they needed to change it. The Japanese version of this game also prominently used the six pointed star as it's part of the summoning dice that is used on all the faces that didn't have a card assigned to it, but in the US version, this was changed to simply two circles instead. I also went through all the maps in the entire game, but I was only able to find one single change, and that was on the map called Kaiba Land. As I've covered before, this whole map was a reference to the killer amusement park from the Season Zero manga. This took place in a building with five different floors containing the five games that the protagonists needed to advance through. Every time they would reach a new game, it would have the words death written out on each of the doors, followed by the letter T and then the number of the floor that they were on. To match this, the Japanese version of the game had the exact same text with a T3 on the left door and T5 on the right door to signify that they were on the fourth floor. But much like the card Destiny Board, this would need to be changed for the US version where they modified it to say Doom instead. Besides these three changes, they also did use censored card images, but these aren't really a big deal as there are no magic and trap cards and the monster cards that do appear in the game are limited to their tiny versions and there's no way to pull up the full card artwork in any capacity, but even with these tiny images, it's easy to see that Cards like Gemini Elf did get censored during localization. Moving on to World Championship Tournament 2004, there wasn't really a lot going on in this game as it's really simple and uses the duelist tier progression format just like its predecessor Stairway to the Destined Duel. With no graphical assets that needed to be modified, the only thing they would need to censor was of course the card art images. Now it's fairly obvious that they recycled the card artworks from Stairway to the Destined Duel, which you can tell by simply looking at them side by side. And they would actually go back and modify a few of the card images that they didn't end up censoring the first time. So Ring of Destruction would lose its grenades and 
Guardian of the Throne Room would lose the red rocket tips and be replaced with green ones, but strangely, Skull Angel would keep its halo, Spear Cretan would remain shirtless, Harpy Lady was without her coverings again, Sorcerer of the Doom would keep its red eyes, and even Turtle Raccoon was left with its nubs. They would also completely miss this little cross on the shield that displays the opponent stats on the opponent selection screen, so there was a bit of an effort, but they definitely came up way short. That brings us to the GX Duel Academy and 7 Trials to Glory part of the video, and by this time, Konami decided they didn't want to deal with any version differences or localization type stuff outside of just translating the text, so for both the Japanese and US versions of these games, they went ahead and censored everything. I took the time to go through all the cards in both of these games and was unable to find any uncensored art that made it through. They even covered all the smallest bases like Sorcerer of the Doom's Eyes as for some reason having red eyes was not okay, but despite that fact, this card had never been censored up until the release of these two games. Possibly because the card was barely ever used, but this definitely shows that Konami was on their game this time. While the fan bases for both regions suffered as a result of this decision, I'd say the biggest L that the Japanese players took was literally the letter L, as even Destiny Board was censored, and they finally got to feel the pain of us TCG players. Although I was able to notice one tiny censorship mistake in both of these games, which they would eventually fix in their final GBA game, Yu-Gi-Oh! Ultimate Masters, and that was the symbol for the Fairy-type monster did include a tiny halo, so while these games did do a very thorough censorship job, it wasn't quite 100% perfect. And that brings us to the final Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy Advance release with the title Yu-Gi-Oh! Ultimate Masters World Championship Tournament 2006. Now you'd think that since this game is pretty much all menus, it wouldn't have a ton of areas that would need to be censored, but the supplementary modes beyond the campaign mode had a bunch of graphical assets that they didn't quite censor correctly. For instance, the dual puzzle mode contains these thumbnails that give you a brief idea of what the puzzle is going to be like, and for some reason, they left all the OCG artworks scattered throughout them. Even as soon as the second dual puzzle available has the uncensored version of Premature Burial featuring the Red Cross. The one after that has the OCG Ultimate Offering featuring the Blood Payment. On another, it's hard to make out, but you can see Tremendous Fire was left completely uncensored. There's even a thumbnail with two uncensored cards with both Exodia and Acts of Despair appearing in the exact same image. You can find a Zombier of the Dark with its text written across the card image, and even the Queen, Elemental Hero Burstinatrix, was among these thumbnails too. Strangely, the thumbnails for the limited dual section actually featured censored artworks as you can see a Spellbinding Circle on the Traps Forbidden Challenge, a Monster Reborn on the Spells Forbidden one, and a Premature Burial which wasn't censored in the dual puzzles was now censored in the Special Summons Forbidden Challenge. Unlike the dual puzzles, these challenges also had a full screen graphic on the coin flip screen, so this added another potential area of censorship that they completely missed out on. As you can see, the OCG version of Zombra of the Dark is in the background for the challenge that bans any monster level 3 and below. And I guess this doesn't really need to be censored in theory, but I can't imagine that they would leave this in on purpose. Another coin flip graphic that they forgot to censor features a giant Kozaki with the devilish horns that were required to be removed for the TCG version of the card. Similarly, the last relevant mode featuring the theme duels also forgot to change a couple of these large coin flip backgrounds as you can clearly see that the XYZ challenge had the original gun barrels that needed to be replaced in the artwork for the TCG versions and they also left the same gun barrels in the VWXYZ challenge which weren't allowed either. So while these images did make it through to the US version, they were pretty much all we got, as they only left the uncensored card artwork in the Japanese version of the game, which was a huge upgrade for them compared to World Championship Tournament 2005. All the other regions were stuck with the censored versions of every card, and even the fairy icon, as I mentioned before, did get censored in this game. But in an act of God, 
They thankfully forgot to censor the Sun Waifu Helios the Primordial Sun and Helios Duus Magiste, a landmark win for waifu lovers of all sizes. And while they did forget to censor these cards, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like a comment, comment on a comment, and be the comment that you want to see in the world. I'll be looking at photos of females cosplaying Jaden for my next wonderful addition to this channel, but in the meantime, stay uncensored, scrubs.